uh, 28th annual Mass Audubon Burgers meeting here in Worcester at uh, Holy Cross College uh, here with Eric Masterson. Eric, you rode your bicycle yes. from where to where? From my front door in Hancock, New Hampshire to the Panama Canal. When did you do this and why did you do this? I, d I left on September 6, 2016, and I took six months to do it, and I was following several, trans uh, several Broadwing Hawks that had satellite transmitters, and I was following their route. What was the best experience, and what was the worst experience of that trip? Uh, the worst experience, I got sick in Veracruz, yep. and so I, got, I spent a week in the most famous Hawkwatch Hotel in the world. Um, the best it was probably, um, well, it's still going on, I, I got introduced to hang gliding, and so I am now um, working on how to redo that trip via hang glider. So I'll just tell everybody, I actually saw Eric give a talk at the Northeast Hawk Watch conference meeting, that was about a year ago or so. Yeah. yeah, talk was fabulous. If you're looking for a guest speaker, you gotta get Eric to give this talk, it's fabulous. So, the, the Burgers meeting, what do you think of it so far? Oh, it's great, it's fantastic. I mean, the top class speakers and, you know, you think you know it all, you don't. Until you, you know, you got to come hear these people speak. It's really fantastic. Um, the latest and greatest research, and it's, it's right now with all of the advance in technology, satellite transmitters, nanotech, and nano tags, all of that. There's just so much new information. It's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I've I've been attending. I think these meetings now for over 20 years, and I'm always impressed yeah. with the with the lineup of speakers. I think they do a great job. All right, yeah, all right, all right Eric. Oh. Oh, oh, that's right. We cannot. Right. All right, Eric. See you, man. Okay, we're back with uh, Ray Brown, uh, talking birds with Ray Brown. Ray, you have a uh, very successful uh, radio program. And how many years have you been on the air? We've been doing it almost 15 years now. So we're at show number 770 as of today. And you're broadcasting today here from the Birders meeting. Uh, you had a guest on from the Birders meeting. Who'd you have on? What were you talking about? We did. We had Dr. Margaret Rubega from University of Connecticut. And she's been doing a lot of research on chimney swifts, trying to figure out where they're all going, disappearing. You know, they're referred to as a common bird in steep decline because there's so many of them, and yet the percentage of their population has dropped really dramatically. So she's trying to figure out why. This is, the, I think, the second year you've broadcast from the birders' meeting. What do you think about the experience here? I think it's the best one that I've seen. And I've seen the ones, you know, the two previous venues, which were nice, but... Uh, this one is easy to get to, um, parking is really easy, the facility is beautiful, and I think I've heard you say, like, doing the AV stuff is a, a dream here, much easier. This is much easier than most places. For those that have not attended this meeting, what would you tell viewers for next year uh, about wanting to attend this meeting? Well, certainly come on out, yeah, check out massautobahn.org website, has, has the information, and uh, as you said, a wonderful speaker lineup here, and it's just a delightful day, as you said, to the lots of vendors, bird clubs, bird organizations, Mass Audubon, and lots of other clubs. You can really learn a lot in a really fun way, so there's no downside that I can think of. All right, we got to give a plug. Talking, uh, talking Birds with Ray Brown. Ray, what's, uh, what's, what's the website? It's just TalkingBirds.com, and the main thing is there's no G in talking. No, right. That's right. Talking birds. Have it. Ray Brown, everybody. Thanks, Ray. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're here with uh, Tina Green. Uh, Tina is from Connecticut, but I don't know where from Connecticut. I'm from Westport, Connecticut. Westport. So why did you drive all the way to Connecticut to come to this birders meeting? Because we're mass birders. <laughs> because we're members of Mass Audubon, and, and I love coming to this meeting. And so, yeah, so what's your thoughts on this meeting in particular? I think it's a, just been a fantastic meeting. Been great. The speakers have been wonderful. Uh, Is there one speaker in particular that you heard here today that just really you thought was just fabulous? Well, I think they've all been great, but yeah. I will say that Peter Mara is, was wonderful, and I plan on bringing him to the, our annual meeting in Connecticut for the Connecticut Ornithological Association. Absolutely, very good, yeah, yeah. What are you looking forward to seeing to let you know that spring has arrived in terms of birds? When, you, when there's, a, like, there's a bird that's gonna arrive and you go, spring is here. Um, I just have been monitoring eagles and the eagles just went on the nest a week ago. Nice. And uh, also I've been monitoring the common ravens in Westport that are nesting. I love ravens, ravens I are very cool. Ravens. Yeah. What would you say to all of the people in Connecticut 
about why they should come to the birders meeting next year. Yes, they should come because it's a great meeting, it's a great venue. It's a great so venue. I had to miss it. It's a great venue, easy to get to. The food is fabulous. Food's very good. Very, yes, I absolutely, absolutely agree. Absolutely, and um, and the speakers are always great, and there's always. And, and here's the other thing too: is easy parking. Wonderful, easy parking, vendors, lots of great vendors here. So it's a great meeting. I really love to come to it. More Connecticut birders should come. Absolutely. Tina Green, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Tina. You're welcome. Cheers. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back with Scott Widensall, uh, famed author, lecturer, <laughs> and friend. I've known Scott for many years. Uh, Scott just actually gave a talk for the Brookline Bird Club for their winter meeting, which was an excellent talk, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it, Sean. Before we get to the Hog Island uh, Audubon Camp, mm -hmm. just talk a little bit about this birders meeting here. Well, this is my second Mass Audubon birders meeting, and um, I, I, I'm loving this one because it's mostly about migration. I mean, that's my thing. I, I love bird migration. So when you have somebody like Dr. Pete Mara bringing the the um, this overview of you know full annual cycle biology, the fact that we need to know every part of a bird's migration cycle, every part of its annual cycle, if we're going to have a hope of conserving them and reversing that one-third, three billion bird decline that we've seen since 1970. Um, you know, this is this should be a clarion call for anybody who's interested in birds and bird conservation. Uh, Hog Island Audubon Camp, so you were just telling me before we started this mm -hmm. interview, you've been doing this for 20 years now? 20, 21 years. 21 years. I've, I've, been, I've been serving as a program director for Audubon's Hog Island Camp, which is National Audubon's oldest facility in the country. It was founded in 1936 up on the mid coast of Maine on Muscungus Bay. It is bird camp for grown ups. Um, <laughs> I like that bird. And I know a lot of people have been up there and they describe it the same it's way. Exactly right. I mean, it's, it is serious ornithology and serious birding. We can come for a week and learn about field ornithology or strengthening your birding skills or, um, you know, uh, sampling the bird migration both on, on Hog Island and out on Monhegan. But it's also camp, so it's great food <laughs> and it's. And and it's, you know, goofy stuff. When you started there 21 years ago, mm -hmm. and you look at where it is today, how has that changed and what has changed in what you do? It's gotten, it's gotten richer, it's gotten, it's gotten better. Um, we're still doing the same thing that we did have done for the last 80 years, which is connecting people directly with nature, giving them an immersive, transformative experience on a gorgeous island on the coast of Maine, giving them um, the information that they need to become better birders, more active conservationists, better educators in many cases. We have retrofitted that camp in an enormous in an enormous way in the last 10 years. Anybody who's who had come to Hog Island maybe prior to about uh, 2000 or 10 or so is in for a surprise when they come back. The Friends of Hog Island, in addition to a $50,000 annual um, cash gift to the camp every year, has provided hundreds of thousands of dollars um, in um, in in-kind donations and a million dollar endowment to keep the camp going. Um, wow, that's great. That's great. That's good stuff. Give a real quick plug for your most recent book as well. <laughs> well, my most recent book is the Peterson Reference Guide to Owls of North America and the Caribbean, published by Houghton Mifflin. And I've got a book coming out in the spring of next year called A World on the Wing about global bird migration and migratory bird conservation from Norton. Awesome. Uh, check out Scott's website. Scott, thank you very much. And there's no shaking hands. My All right, there you have it, folks. Scott Widensall. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Sean. Cheers. Okay, here with Brian Harrington, who, do I say formerly with Manomet Bird yeah, Observatory? Retired emeritus <laughs> with, with Manomet. So there's a little rope there to memorialize my employment. You, they just, <laughs> you're always connected in some way, yeah, right, Brian? Right. 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 Uh, Brian, the author of The Flight of the Red Knot. Flight of the Red Knot. Brian just gave a. I guess a talk and a thanks to Mass Audubon for Mass Audubon for their Hemingway Hall Award, which is a conservation award for good bird conservation work in Massachusetts. So very which, excited to get it. Which which Manomet has been doing great work for many years. You in particular have been doing great work for shorebirds for many years. What's going on with Red Knots? Well. Um, it looks like the populations have stopped declining. They may actually be coming back up a little bit, but there's a lot of up and down, and so it's kind of hard to tell for sure. And uh, but that seemed that the w the optimists among us think that it's looking improved. A long way to go. We think things are maybe going the right way. Are you encouraged? I'm encouraged. Some birds like dowagers that are now abundant on Delaware Bay shore that didn't used to be. 
Uh, so evidently the importance of that bay as a resource is expanding and starting to involve other species besides the semi-sandpipers and the turnstones, the dunlin and the knots and sandlings. It's a critical area, right? I mean, I don't think people understand how critical an area this is for migration of these shorebirds in the spring. Absolutely, and the reason I studied red knots was to find a bird where I could really track, figure out what the population size was and so forth, and w with that work, we sort of, on a matchbook kind of estimate, figured out that roughly 80% of the North American roofer knot population uses that bay in the spring, very, very dependent upon it. I was impressed by the numbers that I saw, and this is about, f what, 15 years ago or so, so I know what that looked like. Yeah. Correct. before that. So what did it look like then? All right, here's how I would summarize that. Um, the population estimate for red knots now is somewhere a little short of 20,000 birds for, for the Rufa group. When the first flock of knots I saw on the shores of Delaware Bay was at Reeds Beach. Which is where I was at. Yeah, and I estimated at that time 60,000 knots on that one single beach. Yeah, I described it as a calico blanket moving up and down the beach. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it was truly spectacular. It still is a pretty amazing I think everyone effect. should go down and see it in the spring. Yeah. Right? I've been there on two different occasions. Every year I say I should go back. I don't. I probably should do it someday again before it gets too late. <laughs> Any closing thoughts about Manomet and, and just the good work they've done over the years? I'm most familiar with the bird programs because that's what I was involved in. They are still at the forefront of shorebird research in, in North America, especially conservation research. These are some dedicated people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, so it's what about you? What about you? What are you doing? Uh, I I sit on the couch a lot now. <laughs> no, actually, I'm, on, you're out in the field still, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm va I vacation a lot now, and yep. I go bird watching, so I love that. I'm still working with red knots on the Cape, working with the Monomoy National Wildlife Refuge, and so that's exciting. Brian Harrington, everyone, thanks, Brian. Appreciate okay. it. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Worcester, I'm with Peter Alden, world famous traveler. Very author, in a very small author, story. traveler. Fifteen books, three million sold, man. That's not That's, bad yeah, for someone absolutely. who knows nothing and can prove it. <laughs> so, Peter, this birders meeting, you've been coming to a lot of them. Just your thoughts on the Mass Audubon birders meetings first. Uh, I think it's a great, a great idea. Glad that they got started. Is this the 10th anniversary, 20th? I don't know. 28th. 28th. Wow. Uh, it's a great thing. But it's a social thing, getting to see a lot of birders from your past and some of the vendors that I know from various states that come down here. It's just a nice warm feeling being with people with similar interests. What's Peter Alden's two cents on the state of birds in Massachusetts? And, uh, we got as many birds increasing as we have decreasing. Uh, most of the decrease has been on the birds of the tall grass prairie, which moved east when he chopped down every tree between here and the Mississippi Valley. So it's the meadowlarks and the bobolinks, the upland sandpipers, and interested in the fact that most of these grassland birds that need vast grasslands, are, which are not native to Massachusetts. I don't even think the brown-headed cowbirds native to Massachusetts. Right. Uh, they're decreasing greatly. Uh, let's go back 25 years. I'm just going to pick two species, wild turkeys mm -hmm. and ravens, and the increase in the, both of those species. Uh, last turkey was shot, I think, on Mount Tom in the very early 1800s. And it's interesting, you know, in game birds right now, rough grouse has pretty much vanished from most of Greater I can't Boston. I can't tell you the last time I've seen a rough grouse in Massachusetts. I know they're around and even not too far from my house. Oh, but to I the west. They're doing okay. Right. But when we started, I started as a buck tooth pimple faced kid that conquered Christmas bird count in 1960, and we had like 42 ruffed grouse. Uh, we haven't had a ruffed grouse for 12 years at all. Uh, it's nice to see the raven reoccupying its range from the north to the south, because all we talk about is southern plants and animals right. coming north, but we have birds from the north that are coming south, but they're just reoccupying range, because I imagine that the ravens were target practice for all the kids with guns. What are you looking forward to seeing coming up here in the, in the next few weeks when spring arrives? Uh, I'm actually going to be looking at the flowers coming up. Uh, Okay, birds. Okay, well, forget the flowers. Uh, we know the. Okay, all right. we're all looking forward to seeing the flowers, Peter. What about the birds? We're well, at the I guess birders' the first meeting. Tree swallows coming over my river in the backyard, uh, but the gentle little tree swallows coming back over the water. It's nice to see tree swallows when they arrive, isn't it? Really it? Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything you want to plug? Um, I want to plug uh, my Audubon Field Guide to New England. Uh, right here, which has been in print for over 20 years, and we've sold go. over yep. a million yep. copies of that series. Yep. All right, Peter Alden, everyone. Peter, thanks. All right. All right, Peter, we don't get to shake hands. All right. All right.
Good Thanks, you, Peter Alden, everybody. Thanks. Okay, I'm with Diana Fr Frigoletti. Yes. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah. Wow, I thought I was going to butcher it. No. <laughs> you have been to many of these meetings, I assume. Why do you come each year, and what did you think of this meeting? Well, actually, I've been volunteering at registration for probably the last 15 years, and I think it's a wonderful event, very informative, and I love all the speakers and the vendors, and it's just great. Everyone's waiting for the one bird that announces to them spring has arrived. What's your bird? Uh, Kate May Warbler. Kate May Warbler. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like that one. In terms of spring in general and the migration, what's your favorite place to go to? Mount Auburn Cemetery, like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Was there one uh, talk that you really uh, enjoyed today? Actually, I just loved Sean's talk because it was great telling me how to figure out when to go out, because that's always the dilemma. Do I fight traffic and risk going to Mount Auburn and not having anything? So now I know. That's the good thing about a coming to meeting like this. Lots of good information, right? Exactly. Excellent. Diana, thank you very much. Uh, come on out to the birders meeting next year, right? Yes, definitely. I'll be here. Great. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. <Okay>. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Okay. Thanks. Okay, I'm here with Barbara Vocal, and Barbara is the moderator for MassBird, yes? Yes, that's true. For those that aren't familiar with MassBird, first, what is MassBird, and how many years have you been the moderator for MassBird? MassBird has been around since, I believe, yeah, the mid-1990s, the yes. so it's been over 25 years, yep. and it's basically an email list, so it's old technology, but it works very, very well. So you can have birding reports and discussions and announcements and... Uh, observations and I think very useful. It's a valuable service. Yeah, thank you. No, I think it is really. I think it's important for the birding community to have a resource like Something that and Mass Bird serves a very critical role in the birding community here in Massachusetts. You've been coming to the birders meeting I'm assuming for many years. Yes. What's your thoughts on this meeting in particular and the Mass Audubon birders meeting in general? Well first of all I'd like to note that this is a lovely location. I think uh, Wayne and whoever else worked on it put together a really awesome list to speakers. So there was something to learn and I think there was something from everyone. Real quick, I know you like to tell everybody out there that will listen, we're coming on tax season. Okay, Barbara, here's your 30 seconds, go. Uh, line 33A on your state ca taxes. Sta sta Massachusetts sta state taxes uh, is your voluntary contribution to the Massachusetts Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. Check that box, make that donation. You'll be glad you did. 33A, Absolutely. yep. Thank Barbara, you. thanks for joining us. Thank there you have it from the Mass Audubon Brewers meeting here at Holy Cross in Worcester. You're our last guest, Barbara, thank you. We don't get to shake hands. There you have it.